والصلاه والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم يقول الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم الله سبحانه وتعالى says ان قران الفجر كان مشهودا this is in surah al isra uh, verse 78 verily indeed the recitation of quran at dawn is ever witnessed so this is an urge for us to start our connection with Quran. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, اقرأوا القرآن فإنه يأتي شفيعا يوم القيامة. Read the Quran, recite Quran. It will be an arbitrator on the day of judgment. It will be a negotiator for you. It will be a mediator. One day, uh, a boy came to his father. And he asked him, why do you read the Quran day after day after day and you do not, um, you do not memorize anything? You haven't memorized it. What, what's the use of reciting the Quran? So the father said to him, I will answer you later, but now I want you to go to the river and to fill up this basket, which is made of straw. And uh, I want you to bring the water in this basket here. The basket was used to put them uh, some coal uh, to, uh, uh, as, uh, to be used for the fire, for fire. So it was black, dirt, dirty. The, the son said, oh, Baba, how can I do that? It's impossible. The water won't hold in this basket. So what happened, the father, the father looked at him and he said, go ahead, just try it. The son went to the river and he filled up the basket. But when he tried to come back, he found out that the water is leaking and when he got to his father, there was no water. And he told him, Baba, how can I do that? It's not holding, he said. The father said, be patient. Just go ahead and do it again. Okay. The, the boy went back to the river, filled the basket, and then came back. Same thing. No water. The father urged him to do it a third time, fourth time. And then he said, Baba, it's impossible to do it. So the father looked at him and, and said, look at the basket. Do you notice anything different? The boy looked at the basket and he said, oh, Baba, the basket is clean. It's not dirty anymore. So the father said, now I can answer your question. This is what the Quran does in the heart. It cleans it. It cleanses it. The Quran, uh, the Quran would get your heart to be clean. So even if you don't memorize the Quran, keep reading it. Even if you don't understand it, keep reading it. Even if there is no way that you can memorize it, keep reading it. Looking at the Quran itself is ibadah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us this book, his holy book, as a way of, as a means to connect to him. And normally when you love something, when you love someone, you like to get connected to him with the best thing that he loves. So this is, I'm answering one of the questions. This is just an introduction and inshallah, just uh, we'll, uh, we'll go on. So our uh, uh, topic today is to talk about the fear of Juz Amma, the 30th chapter of the Quran.
And the reason I chose this chapter in particular, because it has the short surahs that we keep repeating, repeating, repeating in our uh, um, uh, prayers. Now imagine our prayer, how, how connected it will be if, how, if we are having khushua in our prayer. So what will happen? There will be presence now with the, with the prayer. It's not just going up and down and ruku and sujood. When we imagine the, the actions of the prayers who are standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we are bowing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are doing sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine that there is a king who wants everybody to bow to him. Even if they, if they don't like it, they feel that there is, there is some kind of humiliation in, in bowing and in uh, uh, prostrating to anybody. But the more, the more you, uh, the more you do, Now, the more, uh, the closer you, you are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you will understand the power of making sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we chose, as I told you, I chose this chapter in particular to get connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to have more presence in our prayer. When we read the ayahs, we remember the meaning instead of getting in, involved with this and that and this and that in, uh, in the prayer. So before we start, then I also wanted to stop by Surah Al-Fatiha to give some explanation of Surah Al-Fatiha since we all start with, since we all repeat Surah Al-Fatiha in our prayers. So Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. When we, when we start reciting the Quran, we start with Audhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem, I seek refuge with Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala from the uh, cursed devil. Why do we say this isti'adha? Why do we say this form? It takes away the whisper of shaitan to keep a person away from receiving the light of the Quran or to keep a person away from reciting the Quran. The devil prevent is, uh, the, when we say Audhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem, the devil is prevented from hindering us from adhering to what we were commanded or from luring us into what we were prohibited from. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. It's a command from Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala to start our reciting of the Quran with this ta'awud, with this form. And it's mentioned in the Holy Quran in Surah Al-Nahl when Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says, فَإِذَا قَرَأْتَ الْقُرْآنَ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ If you want to start reciting Quran, then start with أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ Then go on to Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Why do we say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim? يَقُولُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ كل عمل لا يبدأ بسم الله فهو أبتر. Each and every action that does not start with بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم with this form, with this, with these blessed words, then it's missing some of its reward. So say بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم so that your actions will be facilitated. Because nothing, whatever you are doing, is done by your power or by you because you know how to do it or by you because you learn about it or by you because and so and so and so and so nothing is done except with the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so start your actions with what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by saying by the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
sometimes a person would say, okay, but I, I sinned. How can I say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and start any action? And the answer is in the form itself. We say Bismillah ar-Rahman Bismillah because he is ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Because he is the one who, who has mercy for us. He is the one who is going to take care of us. He is the one who will accept our tawbah if we make the tawbah sincerely. So what does Ar-Rahman mean? Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ar-Rahimuna yarhamhumu Ar-Rahman. Irhamu man fil ard, yarhamkum man fil sama. So be merciful to those, to Allah's creatures, so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will be merciful to you. Now you might ask, okay, what is the difference between the two words, Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim? Ar-Rahman is a name of Allah that shows mercy to all to everything that he has created. To Muslims, to believers and non-believers, to animals, to, to everything. Whereas Ar-Rahim, Allah shows extra mercy to those who believe. And this is what explains Wakana bil mu'minina rahima. He didn't say Wakana bil mu'minina rahmanan. It says, وَكَانَ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَحِيمًا He was merciful with the believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created mercy and divided it into 100 portions. He descended down one and he kept 99 portions up in the, in the sky for him to have mercy on the Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of judgment. But what about the one portion that was descended on earth? This is the mercy of the mom to her, or to her child. The mercy of the animal mom to her child. The mercy of the animal to another animal. The mercy of a human being to another human being. This is the mercy that we are practicing in this dunya. This is the mercy that, that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu has ordered us to do and to practice. So we started with A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, and now we will be reciting Al Fatiha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the hadith al-Qudsi, in the divine hadith, قَسَمْتُ الصَّلَاةَ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَ عَبْدِي قِسْمَيْنِ I divided a salah, and I will explain what does this word mean now, between myself and my servant to two halves. A salah means here, al-Fatiha. When we recite the Fatiha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has divided the Fatiha in two portions. And we know that it's Al-Fatiha because what is going to be mentioned after this. So nisfun li wa nisfun la. One portion for me, one portion for my servant. As far for, as for the, the portion that's for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so it has three ayahs. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawmiddin. So this is the portion that is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we started with Bismillahir Rahman Ar-Rahim at the beginning of the action to be done. Then we followed it by Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. We are thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the results of the actions. We are thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the bounties. We are thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawm Now, 
We move to the next ayah, which is إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ In this ayah, we have someone who is worshipping and someone who is worshipped. Someone who is asking for help and someone who is helping. And this is, this ayah is between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his servant. So this is the second part of the surah. The third part of the surah is ثَلَاثَةٌ لِلْعَبْدِ اِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Three parts are now, three eyes are for the servant. اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. So when a person says, when when Allah سبحانه وتعالى says قسمت الصلاة بيني وبين عبدي ثلاث لي وثلاث له وواحدة بيني وبينه. Allah says three parts is this surah. Three ayahs are for me, three ayahs are for my servant, and one ayah is uh, uh, shared between me and him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِذَا قَالَ الْعَبْدُ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ So when the servant says, Alhamdulillah, all praise and thanks to be to Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, حَمَدَنِي عَبْدِي My servant has praised me. وَإِذَا قَالْ And when the servant says الرحمن الرحيم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say أَثْنَى عَلَيَّ عَبْدِي So when we say الرحمن الرحيم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say My servant has glorified me When we say most gracious, most merciful وَإِذَا قَالَ And when the servant says مَالِكِ يَوْمِ الدِّينِ the owner of the day of judgment or the king of the day of judgment, it depends on the reading, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Majjadani abdi. My servant has exalted my status. So this is the first part. Allah goes on and says, وَإِذَا قَالَ إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ You alone we worship. And you alone we seek help. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, هَذِهِ لِي وَلَهُ This is between me and my servant. So my servant will worship me and I will give him uh, help. My, my servant will ask me and I will give him. So this is the relation between the servant and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When is the closest point between the servant and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It's when he, is, when he is doing sujood. Because Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, أَقْرَبُ مَا يَكُونُ الْعَبْدُ لِلَّهِ وَهُوَ سَاجِدٌ This is the closest way that the, uh, uh, a, uh, a servant can be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is when he is making sujood. So when you are doing nafila, when you are praying extra, extra uh, other than the part, just make dua while you are doing the sujood. And imagine yourself that you are uh, doing sujood to the Lord of all creatures. Rabbil Alameen. So when he says, وَإِذَا قَالَ إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ قال طلب مني وليعبدي ما سأل. My servant asked me and he will be given what he asked for. So what is it that we are going to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? اهدنا الصراط المستقيم. Now look at the pronoun. We were talking about الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين We are talking about him. Now the the uh, the uh, pronoun shifts. إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم. What's what's the reason? When you talk to someone, then we are you are telling him that we are doing this especially for you. Now we are telling Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that we are worshiping you only, 
and we are asking help from you only. Ya Allah, guide us to the straight path. In one of the explanations, the uh, one of the uh, people of Allah, one of the friends of Allah, al awliya he said, Ihdina sirat al-mustaqim is the correct path. But what is the correct path for us? Ihdina sirat al-mustaqim is Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we ask you, Allah, to guide us, to connect us with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who is going to lead us to on the sirat that will lead us to go to you too. So you will keep us with him. So you will keep us connected to him in the day after and we will be resurrected with him. We will be, uh, we will be with him in the day after in Al-Firdaus Al-A'la Bi'ithnillah. So Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqeem, guide us to the right path. Which Sirat? Which path? Sirat al-Ladheena an'amta alayhim. The Sirat, the path of those whom you have bestowed your grace upon. The Sirat of those whom you have guided. Khayr al-Maghdubi alayhim. Not that the Sirat of those who, who uh, earned your anger. Nor those waladdalin. Nor those who went astray. No. Those two types knew the reality, knew the truth, but they didn't follow it. We don't want them. We want the sirat al-mustaqim that would lead us, that will grant us, that will uh, uh, guarantee for us that you will be pleased for us. We want to do our best in this dunya so that we will be from those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, radiyallahu anhum wa radu'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with them. And they are pleased with him. How can, how can someone be pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? They will be pleased with the bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided for them has prepared for them with the grace that they are going to enjoy in their uh, in the day after so in summary we started the surah with alhamdulillah so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created everything to serve us we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all his bounties but the more we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more we find that we are unable to do it properly. And that's why in one of the du'a, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa says, Allahumma la uhsi alayka thana'an, Allahumma la uhsi thana'an alayka anta kama athnayta ala nafsik. We cannot praise you the way that you deserve to be praised. And if we want to, to uh, learn one form of the best forms of thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will say, Ya Rabbi laka alhamdu kama yanbaghi li jalali wajhika wa azimi sultanik. Ya Allah, we thank you in a way that is suitable to the grace of your face and the uh, the greatness of your supreme authority. And why do we say that this is one of the highest forms of uh, thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Uh, so, uh, it's narrated that once someone was praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said this form, so the angels did not know how much uh, of uh, good deeds to write for him. So they checked with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They said, Ya Allah, if someone, uh, you, uh, you told us, you taught us that if someone does this, we will write so and so hasanat. If someone does this, we will write so and so good deeds. So this, this slave of yours said 
this form and we don't know how, what, it's not in the catalog, what, what's right for him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Uktubuha kama qalaha wa ana ajzihi biha. Write it as is and I will reward him for that. Ya Rabbi laka alhamdu kama yanbaghi li jalali wajhika wa azimi sultanik. So this is Al-Fatiha. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Al-Fatiha hiya umhu al-kitab. This is the mother of the book. This is the, the surah that we start the Quran with. وَهِيَ السَّبْعُ الْمَثَانِي It is the seven repeated ayahs. And this is the seven repeated ayahs that we repeat in all our prayers. In each and every rak'ah, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the things that is mentioned by Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that it has been given only to his ummah. It's exclusive for the people of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is nothing like it in the Torah, in the Zabur, the Psalms, or in the Bible. We have always to remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Rabbil Alameen. This is the one whom we always thank. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. The one who is in charge. The Lord of humans, jinn, angels, animals, everything, everything that has a soul and some, some intellect. Even animals know when they are in danger, they will run away. So we have to remember Allah, the Lord of everything he has created. And we have to know that he is the one who takes care of everything that he has created. In Surah Hud, Ayah 6, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا مِن دَابَّةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ رِزْقُهَا And there is no creature on earth but that upon Allah is its provision. وَيَعْلَمُ مُسْتَقَرَّهَا وَمُسْتَوْدَعَا Allah knows everything. كُلٌّ فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ and everything, all is in a clear register. So always remember that we have to depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on all our affairs. Subhanallah. So everything happens. We have to know that ilayhi yarji'u al-amru kullu. We have to depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now whenever we read Surah Al-Fatiha, we have in mind these, these uh, reflections. Think of what you are reading now. So think of what you are reciting in your prayer. Now we move to uh, Surah Al-Naba. Does anyone have any question? The dua, okay, I have, uh, could you please repeat the dua? Ya Rabbi laka alhamdu kama yanbaghi li jalali wajhika wa azimi sultanik. Ya Rabbi laka alhamdu kama yanbaghi li jalali wajhika wa azimi sultanik. So, moving now to Surah Al-Naba. Surah Al-Naba is the first surah of the Juz 30. And if we, if we want to connect it to the surah before, the surah before is Surah Al-Mursalat. Surah Al-Mursalat talks about إِنَّمَا تُوْعَدُونَ لَوَاقِعِ It talks about the day of judgment. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, promised is going to happen. So Surah Al-Naba is the surah that comes after Surah al, surah al Mursalat. So, what is that, that thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised? It's the thing, the, the day of judgment, that, that the non believers deny. Those who don't want to believe in 
uh, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, deny. Those who don't want to believe in the resurrection after death, they deny. So this surah talks about the, uh, the uh, explanation of what's the day of judgment. The day of judgment, which is super uh, uh, important, and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about it. We, that's why we all have to uh, get prepared for it. We have to get prepared to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to get prepared to, uh, to bring our deeds in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want to be happy on that day. We want to be of, the, of those who, of, of the winners on that day. So in rejection of the non-believers questioning the reality of the day of judgment and due to, the, to their denial of its occurrence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this surah to, to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the first ayah says, عَمَّ يَتَسَأَلُونَ What are they asking about? This is an indication that the question is about something very important. So they are asking about the Day of Judgment. They're not asking to learn about the Day of Judgment. They are asking because they deny the Day of Judgment, because they, they mock the Day of Judgment. They are asking about the great news. What's that great news? It is the harvest that each and every person will bring with him to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's the fruit of the actions in their dunya. So, if they did good, they will be rewarded. If they did bad, they will be punished. This is something very important. This is what each and every person is uh, getting in this dunya, is working on in this dunya, just to, to do uh, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do, or some people would deny that. So what is this that they are asking about? Some people... So some people, this is what they are in disagreement. The first group is, the, the first group believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first group believe in the day of judgment. The first group are preparing themselves for that day. But the second group are not. They don't believe in the day of judgment. They don't believe in resurrection after death, they don't want to believe in that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kalla sayalamun. Allah severely threatens and warns those who deny the day of judgment. The word kalla in itself, in the Arabic word, is wa zajr wa nahi, is a word of command, is a word of ordering to be away from, ordering to not to do this thing. So it means they should stop what they are do, denying. They should stop what they are asking about in a mocking way. Nay, they will come to know. Nay, again, they will come to know. In the Quran, in the Holy Quran, if an ayah is repeated, it, it, it's uh, uh, done, uh, this repetition is for affirmation. It's for assurance. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is affirming, is affirming that there will be a day of judgment. It will be yawmul haqq. Now, if we want to, to learn about knowledge, uh, about what we learn about, so it will be three levels. So the first one is and the second is 
The third level is If someone, for example, comes and tells you that he went to so-and-so city and he found the most beautiful spot on earth. So he gave you he gave you the information. You know that this person does not lie. So you take it. Now you have the information. You have Now you asked the next level. You asked about it, about this spot. And you knew that he was correct. So you traveled to it. Now you have this is the truth. But when you go there and when you wonder and when you visit this place and you really find it that this, when you see what he saw, when you find that this is really the best, the most beautiful, uh, um, the most beautiful uh, place on earth, then you, you will have then you are, uh, uh, your status now is khalas. So there is nothing that will make me uncertain of this. This is certainty. And this is what will happen in the day after, but it will happen even before someone dies. When someone dies, let's, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's talking about those who don't believe. So during death, while he is dying, then we يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى at that state, لقد كنت في غفلة من هذا you were hideous that this will happen. فكشفنا عنك غطاءك فبصرك اليوم حديد. So we unveiled your uh, the, uh, the veil that was on on your eyes, and now you are seeing what where your destination will be. Now you can see what you, you couldn't see before. And this is why when people are on their deathbed, sometimes you feel that they are talking to things that we don't understand. It's not that they are hallucinating, it's they are seeing some, some things that we don't see. They started to shift, to move to that space, to that place. So now no, everyone knows that at this point, everything is true. So, كلا سيعلمون سيعلمون they will know they will realize what is their position, where are they, where what will happen, and where they will be. When there is a comparison between what's good, the the winners and the the uh, the losers. The losers will feel so bad, they will feel so the punishment when they uh, see themselves in hellfire. But when they know that the, uh, the winners are uh, enjoying the bounties, that of itself is another level of punishment. We will stop here, inshallah. And inshallah, next week, same time, we will go on. Uh, I would like to see, do you have any questions? Uh, is there anything that was not clear? So please uh, mention it. Thank you. You can unmute yourself and uh, ask your question if you have any. Okay. All right, so at this time now, inshallah, you realize you have to say, Allahumma laka alhamdulillah, Allah, ya rabbana laka alhamdulillah, ya rabbana laka alhamdulillah, ya rabbana laka alhamdulillah, ya rabbana laka alhamdulillah, Allahumma inna nas'aluka min khayri ma sa'alaka minhu abduka wa nabiyuka muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa na'udhu bika min sharri ma sta'adaka minhu abduka wa nabiyuka muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, اللهم إنا نسألك من الخير كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم ونعوذ بك من الشر كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم May Allah shower his unconditional love and mercy upon you and your families, your loved ones, whether they are 
living with with you whether they are still alive or whether they passed and uh, preceded us may allah the most affectionate and, and loving uh, cleanse our soul cleanse our hearts in this in this blessed month and fill it with the divine light wa sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam and inshallah we will be meeting next week inshallah assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh